ದಿನಯಾಮಿನ್ಯೌ ಸಾಯಂ ಪ್ರಾತ ಶಿಶಿರವಸಂತ ಪುನರಾತ ಕಾಲ ಕ್ರೀಡತಿ ಗಚ್ಛತ್ಯು ತದಿ ನ ಮುಂಚಾಶಾವಾಯು ದಿನಯಾಮಿನ್ಯೌ ಸಾಯಂ ಪ್ರಾತ ಶಿಶಿರವಸಂತ ಪುನರಾತ ಕಾಲ ಕ್ರೀಡತಿ ಗಚ್ಛತ್ಯು ತದಿ ನ ಮುಂಚಾಶಾವಾಯು the verse is titled as stubborn gusts of desires how does it say day and night dinayaminyo sayam pratah dusk and dawn shishirava santav winter and spring punarayatah come again and again kala kridati time sports gachatyayuhu life goes life ebbs tadapina munchat aashavayu yet the gust of desires leaves not <laughs> so what is he trying to say here a very very poetic very beautiful uh, dusk and dawn uh, day and night winter and spring come again and again time sports i uh, just trying to convey the time is passing time is fleeting and it what happens mickey ji what's happening yes sir what's happening well time is fleeting <laughs> that's what is happening and yet what happens have i caught you off guard i'm just trying to relate to your question we were talking about the fact that uh, you know <clears throat> that uh, you know things move on and you shouldn't get attached to the result of what you are trying to do that was the previous verse sir we have to be a little detached so that that concept of attachment now yeah i got the gust of desire and you know the ah the, the, the fact that uh, you know that uh, yeah so the the verse is only trying to convey that everything is changing yet something that doesn't change which is your desire still seem to be lurking right through time and again everything has gone by but the desire still lurks the gust of desire leaves not so you may say sir so what isn't it can you not turn back and say sir so what what's your problem if my desires are still there can you throw some light on it what is it trying to convey here but i guess the theme that is repeatedly there is that desires are what eventually lead to your unhappiness in the sense that you know firstly they can never be fulfilled and uh, secondly they are attached to an illusory concept of what is around you mm-hmm. so unless you learn to detach from that you're on a permanent cycle of you know misery so there is this unending insatiable supply of desires as it were and 
and the way everybody lives uh, functions is just trying to meet their objects of desires everybody is trying to meet their object of desire so we have often said and it is as you rightly said there the theme keeps coming again and again just to convey this message so that it will start resonating within desire is defined or understood should be understood as an agitation desire should be understood as an agitation and cessation of agitation is happiness therefore one is trying to for constantly find happiness by trying to constantly meet his desires and its objects of desire from the moment you get up till the time you go to bed from morning to evening from action to action all what you're trying to do is to give in to whatever your mind demands and desires and not meeting it is going to cause an agitation desire itself is an agitation and if the desire is not met what would happen sir let's say for some reason things don't happen the way you want what happens when desires are not met you're dissatisfied you're not uh, <clears throat> you're not happy with the result or happy dissatisfied and you allow that dissatisfaction you allow that agitation suresh ji is saying there's anger rightly said mani ji says frustration the disappointment it all comes to a point where it starts clouding your your clarity you become deluded don't we we get confused and deluded and then we don't know what we get into what we create what we make of ourselves life passes he says yet the gust of desires leaves not so the problem is not the desire the problem is our pettiness in the desires our childishness and there are two simple stories or events that convey this there was a time in fact a man was taking a walk in the the woods and suddenly he realized that he was being watched by a tiger and he started running he ran and ran and ran and he said he thought he would not be able to outrun the tiger so he climbed a tree and as he climbed onto a tree he hurriedly climbed onto a branch which was very weak almost a dried up branch and as he was holding on to the branch the branch was slowly giving in about to break any time the lake the tree was overlooking a a huge well and he realized there were a couple of crocs in the well and in that hurry what he did was he disturbed the beehive and the bees were very annoyed and the bees were stinging him the tiger is adjusting its mouth when this is going to fall because right into the mouth the tiger is there the bees are stinging him if he falls into that body of water he will be eaten by the crocs the bees are stinging him and all that disturbance of that bee hive the honey started dripping and what our friend does he sticks his tongue out and he puts his tongue out because he want honey gust of desires leaves not this is what they say uh, he just sticks his tongue out uh, i hope the tongue that drop of honey falls on my tongue he wanted to catch that uh, 
the pettiness, the incessant want, desire, that endless rush into the world for just wanting that bodily pleasure, that external pleasure. A cobra got hold of a frog, a poisonous snake. And almost half the frog was inside the mouth, the fangs of the poisonous snake, the hind legs of the frog, it held him, gripped. He's just slowly eating it. It's not dead, it's still alive, struggling. And suddenly there was an insect nearby that was, it came flying near the frog. And what the frog did, it stung, it stung out to catch the insect. Its life is going to end any moment. And yet the frog was interested in the, the little insect that flew by. Uh, that's how frogs eat, no? They, they, they put their sticky tongue out and got it. So whether it be the animal kingdom or whether it be the human kingdom, we all are falling a prey to the endless desires. And the masters are constantly pounding this truth onto us. The man minus desires equals God. You've got to understand that Godhood the truth is beyond these desires. This. So never should these desires become so hazy that it clouds your vision of something, anything beyond it. You must be able to see through the desires. In the Gita, he describes desires. What are the different types of desires one can have? Uh, he says there are three types of desires you can have. Sattvic desires... Rajasic desires and tamasic desires. Now, how do these three types of desires? Desire is a barrier between man and God. That is the same with all desires. The desires of three types. So all of us have different types of desires. Sattvic, Rajasic, Tamasic. He says tamasic desires is like the embryo and the womb. Nothing can be done with it. You have to wait. Nine months, you got to wait. Nothing can happen. In the second month, you want the baby, nothing will happen. Sixth month, you want baby, nothing will happen. Time. Time will only take care of tamasic desires. Rajasic desires, he calls it as a, a mirror which is covered with thick dust. A thick layer of dust has covered on the mirror. Now, when you see a, a mirror covered with dust, what do you see? What does it convey? A mirror covered with dust, what does it convey? Hiranji. Womb, we can't do anything. Embryo in the womb, time takes its course. Tamasic desires. Rajasic desires, mirror and dust. What does the example convey? What do you gather from that? That uh, your mind is covered with, uh, you, you are sort of without intellect, without knowledge. Mm. And your mind is uh, not clear anymore. Sir, all desires are of the same nature, like tamasic desires, no effort can do anything. Time only takes care of tamasic desires. You follow that example of the embryo of the womb? Yes. When you talk of rajasic desire, we talk about the mirror and the dust. So when the dust covers the mirror, can you see yourself? No, you don't. But there is an opportunity to clear it. Correct. There is an opportunity. You don't see. Point one, you don't see yourself. Point two, you'll have to put an effort to clear the dust. Right. That is the rajasic desires. And sattvic desires, he says, as the mist or the clouds covering up the sun. The clouds that block the sun. How long does it take for the clouds to clear and the sun to shine through? Because a passing cloud apparently has clouded the sun. How long does it take for the cloud to pass by, sir? Well... You'd never know. 
a passing breeze is good, isn't it? Yes. It's a whiff of cloud, sir. Just a whiff of cloud. Suddenly, the everything becomes a little gloomier. Why? Because the cloud that was passing has come and come between you and the sun. So right. there is light in the other side of the. Yeah, but you don't beyond experience the cloud. it. Yeah, there is very yeah. much light beyond the cloud, but that whiff of cloud blocks the sun. Sir, what is the size of the sun compared to the earth, sir? Well, I don't know the times exactly, but it's enormous. So the the size of the sun vis-a-vis -vis Earth, whatever will be the number, and what is the size of the Earth compared to the cloud? Yes, still much bigger. And yet, that passing whiff of cloud has the audacity to block the sun and your vision of that light. That's right. That is the absurdity of it. <laughs> the absurdity of that is, is a passing cloud which can be a few meters apart blocks yeah. the mighty vision of the mighty sun and the size of the earth. What is it? And yet the cloud was responsible because of the sun. Without the sun, there's no cloud itself. And the cloud goes and blocks the sun. So the examples are so beautiful. The scriptures use, you can start breaking it and comparing it. Mm -hmm. But what they're saying is sattvic desires are effortless. They can easily be moved away. They can easily be handled as a passing breeze can move the clouds away and the sun shines. Tamasic desires, you can't do anything. Rajasic desires, you've got to put in some effort like the dust covering the mirror. Sattvic desires, they, they are so pure, so divine, so subtle, they are very easy to deal with. So therefore, what do you conclude? Desires all of us have. All of us have got tamasic, rajasic and sattvic desires. So what should you do? What should be your goal in life? To achieve to the culturing sattvic device. I mean, uh, desires. To change the nature of desire from tamasic to rajasic to rajasic to sattvic. Until we all reach a state one day. I don't know when that is. Where we reach a state of desirelessness. But start from Tamas yeah. to Rajas, Rajas to Sattva. Yeah. Hmm? Can I goal. ask you a Can I ask you a question here? Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, having a uh, Swatik goal in a much larger scale, it is a lot easier to follow and do something about it. But uh, to reach that goal on our day-to-day -day life, however small it may be, is much more difficult. The very small things, we get angry. We get this with something. Uh, so controlling that is much more difficult than having a goal that I'll be doing things for others, which I think is a higher goal. So how do you uh, how do you uh, do that? It's a practical issue to me, at least. So uh, just in trying to understand your question, are you asking when it is a, a selfish desire, uh, it seems to get me very emotional and I get affected, I become a victim of that desire and emotions. But when the desire becomes purer, when it accommodates a larger cause, a larger interest, when you're unselfish, yes, I, I don't have those challenges. So you're trying to rationalize what, why is it so? Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm trying to do that. I'm finding the smaller things where I should have better control uh, is more difficult than having a larger thing. Maybe, maybe it is, is due to day-to-day uh, -day things vis-a-vis -vis a much larger things. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm clear with the question. Yeah. But let's surrender, sir. I am surrendering, actually. Harish ji.
It's the other way around, Guruji. I am just going to be quoting what I've heard earlier. What I've heard earlier. Yes, so, uh, I think the example that you gave explains actually, uh, it's a beautiful example. The example of the cloud and the sun. And it really explains what Hiranji is asking. Because just as the closer the cloud is to you, the more it blocks the sun. Similarly, the closer or the more attached you are to something, the more it blocks out everything else. So the question is, when you are attached to the higher, therefore, the, there is lesser chance of the reality being hidden. When you are attached to this, to the lower, which is closer to you, and you hold it closer to you, that is when you are truly not sattvic. You are more closer to either Rajas or Tamas. So if you were truly sattvic, then you would be further on the cone, as it were, you know? So it would hide less. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I think, I I think you understood, understood the question very well. How to get over it? Maybe I'll keep working. Now, the answer is exactly what Guruji said, that at each stage, we keep attaching, you keep um, raising the goal or having a higher ideal. And that is what is, um, is uh, okay, I, I, I've typed it out, it's rather long. Rather than say it sometime, if people can read it, you know. But what I'm saying is, um, the the higher the goal, the great automatically, you know, the the lower attachments which cloud it get, fall away and become less risk. So the answer is only to keep constantly raising the bar. Okay. I suppose yeah. you become more and more like the more illustrious friends that we have. Okay. Or try it. Thank you. I don't know, Guruji. I don't know where, whether Choti Mo Badi Bhat. Sir, I spoke for one hour. Or we all spoke for one hour. I don't know how much sense we made, but you spoke for three minutes and you already got a fan following, sir. <laughs> huh? Very well analyzed the example of the uh, of the cloud. Uh, in fact, Vijayji also beautifully puts it, you, you, you hold a small stone in front of your eye, which can block the whole world. Uh, I can put my little finger on my eye and it blocks the whole world. So also the example of the cloud closer to you blocks the sun, anything further away, it doesn't block. So the spirit, the concept of attachment and detachment. You know? So when you're detached, so why are you able to handle uh, larger projects, bigger things, working for a larger cause? Because you, there is less of I and my in it. You're just a humble servant trying to serve a larger cause. But the moment it comes something closer to yourself, there is that attachment, there's a possessiveness, there's I and my, there is uh, all that holding up. And therefore, wherever there's a desire and attachment and ego, always has consequences, the repercussions. Therefore, you're not able to handle that. So if you are detached even to that and say, I, I, what, do, what is I and my in it? What is there in it? For me to be possessive about, you know. So as objectively you are serving a larger cause, same role you play objectively, you play a part as a grandfather or as a husband or as a father, whatever role you play, just be a little objective and say, I don't, I don't own anything. It's, you know, you are, you are very dispossessive in that attitude. Exactly the same attitude you carry to a larger cause, where you are just entrusted with a, with a, with a, with a work, where you are just a trustee. You don't own anything. So you live in your house as you have checked into a hotel. You don't own that. Yet you have rightfully deserved to be there and spend the weekend there. If you treat your own home as if it's a hotel room you have checked into, no attachments. You'll enjoy every moment, every part, every bit of it. But you say, I don't take anything. I don't own anything. That dispossessive attitude to live in your own home as if it's you're in a hotel. I'm just 
enjoying something which i have been blessed with why should i own something why should i arrogate anything so if that kind of an attitude which is nothing but little detachment if that attitude is present i am certain it will not overwhelm it is not overwhelming that's all i would say okay all right sir thank you sir thank you and good to have you back in the classes sure thanks right sir namaskar namaskar yes Thank mm-hmm. you.